Hello everyone. Now today I start with a new chapter called trigonometry. Many of you must be thinking that trigonometry is something what we have already done. But when I say that we are starting with a new chapter, so my request to you is that please listen every word carefully. And if at some step, if you need to unlearn those things what you have learned in previous classes, do that. And listen as if like you are listening for the first time, fresh. So in this session, we will be starting with only the introduction part, that introduction to trigonometry. And in trigonometry, what we need first thing is angle. At least that much you must be remembering and that you can take further. Now, what kind of angles you had in your previous classes? You were measuring them only in degrees. So here, I, when I say measures of an angle and if I'm writing there in degrees, so you can expect there's something more also which may come. Now, okay, let us revise that. What do we mean by one degree? That if a circle is given to you, you draw two perpendicular lines and divide that circle into four equal parts. And then what happens that divide the portion which is between those two perpendicular lines, I mean that quarter part into 90 equal parts. And then one part is called one degree. So something like the shaded portion what you are seeing in the figure, that would be called one degree. All of you have seen that what one degree means. You must have used protractor in your previous classes. So let us not extend this degrees part. You are aware of that. It was only for the revision. Now, second method or second way to measure an angle is in radians. So when I say radians, of course, I will have to define what we mean by radian. So definition of radian is that I will have an arc AB, say of length R, which has been taken from a circle of radius R. And then what AB subtends at the center O, that angle is called one radian. So picture would be something like this. That angle at the center subtended by arc AB, where length of arc AB and radius, when those two are same, then that angle at the center O, angle BOA, that is called one radian. Now, some rough idea you may have, I mean, seeing the picture I am seeing, that what may be that angle, I mean, in degrees, what you have done before, that looks like almost 60 degrees. So, for your information, I am saying, it is 57 point something. I mean, that angle, one radian, is equal to 57 point something degrees. So, around 57 you can take. Now, after understanding that we can measure angle in two ways, let us move further and remember this before I move further that here onwards I will be taking angles only in radians. If I have to take angle in degrees then it would be specified. Otherwise assume that angle is going to be in radian only. Now when I move further I realize that I have been saying that degree radians you have already done degrees now I will be doing it in radians. Now there has to be some relation between degree and radians. And what is that relation? I'm not getting into the derivation part. I'm straight away giving you the relation. It is pi radians equal to 180 degrees. So if angle is in degree, if you want to measure it in radians, you can do that exercise. Or if angle is in radian, and if you want to get it in degrees, that exercise also can be done. Now let us take some standard angles so that your exercise of actual evaluation would be shortened. Now I take suppose angle 15 degree, I have written that corresponding radian angle would be pi by 12. How do I do that? That is done just exactly as what you have done in your previous classes, unitary method, that 180 degree equal to pi radians, then 15 degrees how much? Then it would be 15 into pi upon 180 and that leads to nothing but pi upon 12. Now let us try some more angles and next could be 30 degree. 30 degree would be double of 15 degree. So it is double of pi by 12. So that is pi by 6. Some exercise you can sh actually make short by doing this kind of exercise. That if 30 degree is double of 15 degree, then you don't have to use that unitary method again. You can just multiply here itself that pi by 12 by 2 and you can get pi by 6. Then 45 degree, that is 3 times of pi by 12. So pi by 4. Then 60 degree, 60 degree would be pi by 3. That is double of 30 degree. That also can be used. Now I take some more angles which may be required in your further part. 75 degree, it is 5 times of 15 degree, so it is 5 pi by 12. Then it is 90 degree, 90 degree is nothing but half of 
180 degree, I can do that also. So pi by 2. Then 120 degree, this is, I mean, some angle which you would be using every now and then, I would say. Now it is 2 pi by 3. It is double or 60 degree. That way you can evaluate if you wish. And 270 degree I have written there, it is 3 pi by 2. It is 3 times of 90 degree. So some angles I have given here, which degrees to radians or radians to degrees if you wish. You can remember this table if you want. Frankly speaking, after a few exercises, you will be able to remember them as it is. Now, let us move further. You have done in your previous classes that length of an arc when angle is given in degrees. And here we will be taking length of an arc when angle is given in radians. So, let us start. Length of an arc, if it is denoted as S, where radius of the circle is R, then corresponding length of the arc AB here in the picture, that is given as S equal to R theta, where theta is the angle subtended by arc AB at the center O. And mind you please, theta has to be in radians. This formula S equal to R theta is applicable only when theta is in radians. Now let us take quickly that area of a sector also. I'm sure that also you have done in your previous classes when angle was given in degrees and here we will be taking it radians. Now, if AOB is the sector whose area we are interested in, radius is given to be R, then area of the sector, the shaded part, is given as half R square theta where R is the radius, as I have already mentioned, and theta is the angle subtended by arc AB at the center O, and theta has to be in radians. I repeat, both the formulae, S equal to R theta and area of the sector, half R square theta, these two are to be used only when angle is in radians. Now, with this background, don't you think at least some question we should take? Then some you know, like you will have some place where you can use this formula and that application you will understand. So I go to some illustration. And the illustration is that two concentric circles with radii R and 2 R have given. Two parallel tangents to the inner circle cut off from the outer circle. Find its length. Now when I read this question, either you draw that picture, I mean when I read the question in your mind. But we need to actually draw the picture and unless I draw, things will not be clear. So I have drawn here two concentric circles with center O with the given information that OP is R and OA is 2R. We can have OP upon OA. Now the triangle OPA is a right triangle and OP upon OA would be nothing but sine of angle PAO. So that leads to angle PAO equal to pi by 6. Why? Because OP upon OA is 1 by 2. Means sine theta, if I call that angle is theta. Sine theta is half, then what would be that theta? This part you have already done in your previous class. So it has to be 30 degrees. But mind you, please, I generally do not call angles in degrees. So I have deliberately written there angle in radian and it is pi by 6. Now I have found angle PAO. Okay. And actually what I need perhaps is angle POA and using that I will be moving further. So right now I have already evaluated what is angle POA. How do I say angle POA is by the way? Pi by 3. Reason is angle POA would be 90 minus 30 degree. So it is nothing but 60 degree. So it is pi by 3. Let us move further. And now what I have done, I have done some construction. I have taken the diameter BC and I realize that arc AB is the required arc whose length is to be obtained. Fine. Now angle AOB is pi minus, I have written inside bracket, pi by 3 plus pi by 3. Now stretch your mind that why I am saying that inside bracket quantity is pi by 3 plus pi by 3. Look at the figure. Angle AOP is 60 degree. Angle POC due to symmetry I am saying even that is 60 degree. So 60 degree means pi by 3. So pi by 3 plus pi by 3 that would be nothing but you are actually 120 degree. That is to be subtracted from 180 degree. So instead of writing everything in degrees I have deliberately written there in terms of radians so that you get habit of radians. And that leads to 
angle A O B as nothing but pi minus 2 pi by 3 means pi by 3. Now angle A O B is ready with me. Means arc A B subtends angle A O B at the center. So S equal to R theta should give you final answer. And that would lead to length of arc A B as 2 R into pi by 3. Why am I multiplying by 2 R? Don't get confused. 2 R is radius of the outer circle. So I have written 2 R. Please do not get confused that I have multiplied 2 to R as if like R is the radius. R radius of the inner circle. Outer circle radius is 2 R. So this is what we wanted. Like length of R KB should be here 2 R into pi by 3. Now one question is not sufficient. Let us take quickly the second one also. And the second one is 6 circles equal circles each of radius A are placed so that each one of them touches two circles. Their centers being on the circumference of another circle show that the area which they enclose is 2a square into 3 root 3 minus 5. Now obviously such a big statement it will need some figure. So I draw the figure quickly. I draw six circles touching one circle touching two other circles and a, b, c, d, e, f I have taken as the centers of the circle and it is given that centers of the circle they lie on another circle. So that dotted circle I have also shown there. Then we realize that we may have to do some construction. So I have joined those A, B, C, D, etc. by line segments. Then understand one thing that something more also I have done there. That point where two circles are touching I have named as P and Q. And center of the circle is O which I joined to P and I joined to Q. Now keeping something in mind I have done that. What I am supposed to do, the inner portion, that flower kind of thing what you are seeing inside, that area is to be obtained. And for that, I will take first only OPAQ into my consideration. I will subtract from the quadrilateral OPAQ the sector P's AQ area. This is the idea. And then I will take six times. So realize this, that keeping something in mind, I have done that construction there. And then tell me first what is that angle BOA? Is it not 60 degree? 60 degree means pi by 3. Yes, it is pi by 3. Then I move from there and I realize angle POA is 30 degree which is nothing but pi by 6. Now, where does this help me? This helps me in getting angle PAO. Look at that PAO. Will it not be 90 minus 30 degree? So it is 60 degree means pi by 3. Mind you please, I am continuously writing angles in radians only. Then from here I get OP, which is nothing but A tan pi by 3 and it is A root 3. You just draw that and confirm what I am saying. It is nothing but A root 3. Now where does this OP help me? This would help me in getting area of triangle OAP. And double of that would be area of quadrilateral. That is the idea. So area of the quadrilateral would be 2 times half into A into A root 3. And it leads to nothing but a square root 3. So area of quadrilateral is ready with me. And now I get area of the sector PAQ. And that is half r square theta. So it is half a square. And what is that theta? Theta is 2 pi by 3. How do I say so? Because angle PAO was pi by 3. So double of that would be angle PAQ. So it is 2 pi by 3. So area of sector PAQ is half a square into 2 pi by 3. Fine. Now what I have to do? I have to subtract the sector's area from the quadrilateral area. And required area would be 6 times of that. So required area is 6 times a square root 3 minus a square into pi by 3. Now do the simple calculation and you will realize that it is nothing but 2 a square into 3 root 3 minus pi, which is the required area. I mean, we were supposed to show that it is the same as 2 a square into 3 root 3 minus pi. Now, these are the two examples which I have taken, keeping in mind area of sector and length of an arc. Deliberately, I kept writing angles in radians and not in degrees. So, mind you, please, here onwards, we will be writing angles in radians. Now, when I come next time, I will be coming with something new in trigonometry. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you.